Hey, it's Nonus with Get Organized Already. Because of COVID-19 restrictions, my family of four and I decided to get an RV and go on an epic road trip out of the city. If you're considering doing the same, this video is going to help you with what to bring, what not to bring, and what to expect at RV parks and campgrounds. General questions like, where do you do your laundry? So stay tuned. You don't have to be super organized or really good at fixing things to live in an RV, but those two traits will help you a really, really lot. Whatever your reasons, getting out of the city to live in an RV and see the world is a great choice. We've seen so many amazing places. We've gotten to know how to work together better as a family. And although I don't think they would admit it, my teenagers have learned some life skills they will never forget. <laughs> so you're at your house getting ready for this trip and you have no idea what to pack. You have a totally empty RV. Don't sit in the RV and try to figure out what will go where. Instead, go inside your house and go through your things room by room, picking out only the things that you cannot live without. So this is the kitchen in the RV, but I started packing in our home kitchen, going through each cabinet and drawer and taking out only the essentials. Then I took the kitchen items one box at a time and put them away in the RV kitchen. This is a picture of all the clothing I gathered from my bedroom to live in indefinitely. It's not many clothes, is it? I used a laundry basket to carry things out to the RV and I put them away in the drawers, just like in the kitchen, one load at a time. Stocking your motorhome one load at a time is the best way to make sure you don't overpack. Let's start at the front of the RV. Above the driver's seat is our Xbox. We used it to play games and watch movies. And then above the passenger seat, there was the Wi-Fi router, but it was pretty often we didn't have Wi-Fi or cell service. We weren't really expecting that, so we bought some used DVDs at thrift stores along our journey. The dashboard in front of my seat opens and has compartments, and in it I stored all of my office supplies. I brought envelopes and stamps, along with checkbooks to pay bills from the road. There are pens and scissors and post-it notes, of course, but not very many. I brought thank you cards, but you could also pick up postcards for that purpose along the way. In this drawer near the front, near my office, I call it, we have our everything drawer with tape, batteries, extension cords, and mounting putty or earthquake putty as we call it in LA. You definitely need earthquake putty because driving in an RV, there's an earthquake every day. Above our front door, we have lots of essentials. A wall clock, Febreze, definitely need Febreze, y'all. At least two flashlights and lots and lots of quarters. Of course, you need a road atlas for when you're offline and you need a good lighter for fires, lighting the oven. Just need a good lighter. Moving on across, this is what the kitchen cabinets opened. All my plates and glasses are in there. Everything's plastic. There's one ceramic coffee mug, otherwise it will all break. Pots and pans up there, measuring cups. There I am in the microwave. Here we go down. Collapsible dish drying rack is great. Under the sink, I have only a couple things. Paper towels, dish soap, broom, trash can, gloves. In the back, there's an instant pot and a magic bullet, which we don't use that often, so they stay in the back. This is my top kitchen drawer with pretty much all the tools we're going to need. I brought one big knife and one serrated knife. Bring one big pot. You do a lot of kind of pot things. I keep it in the oven to store it. So I use dish towels and oven mitts in between every pan and Pyrex dish to keep them from clanging into each other while we drive. In the refrigerator, the most important thing to know is store your eggs in the door where they are secure. We stored them on a shelf for a while and lost many, many eggs whenever anyone would open that door. Yikes. I used a Tupperware to keep to make my deli drawer in there. And then I used an old box that ramen came in 
to keep all of our hot sauces and condiments in there because everybody has a lot of condiments and they just go flying everywhere. Once the kitchen pantries are pulled out from either side, there's tons of room to store stuff. That box on the middle shelf there has all of our silverware standing up in two cups inside the box because there wasn't enough drawer space. Do not buy anything in bulk. You have nowhere to put it. Just buy the small size. I know it costs more, but that's what you got to do when you're in an RV. Just look at this little tiny sad Nutella. We have food stored in a lot of places. This is over here over the couch. We have chips above the table. Whoop. And then I stored all of our fruit, onions, and potatoes and kind of things up here, right beside Zane's clothes, my son's clothes. I just took anything from the house, containers, an Amazon box, a shoe box, and filled them up to keep the clothes a little bit organized. That's the dining area. And there we're right back to the kitchen. This is the bathroom, that's the shower. I bought a tiny little bath mat because you don't want to step on the yucky floor. We brought one of everything, shampoo, conditioner, soap. Like everybody can't bring their own shampoo and stuff. Sorry about that, you just have to share. In here, everybody did get their own shelf. Again, you can use containers, like this is one that's designed for a refrigerator. Use that to keep all your toiletries from falling over. This is the tiny bathroom. Definitely the worst part of RV living is the tiny bathroom. It's like traveling around with a porta potty. No, thank you. Here's the master bedroom. Right now we have everybody's pillows and blankets on one bed because that's the best place to store them. Two pretty bougie things that we brought that I use all the time are humidifier for the whole place and a portable Bluetooth speaker. I use that thing all the time. You also need to make sure you have headphones for everybody, USB chargers that go into the cigarette lighters if you have an older RV. Okay, I'm gonna tell you some secrets about RV life. I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget any. Uh, whenever you drive into a place and the sign says campground full, that's not always true. Sometimes they don't have someone there to change the sign or sometimes you can go in and ask if they have a dry spot so you can boondock for the night, which means no electric or water or sewer, but you have everything you need in here, really. Another tip your kids will definitely thank me for, check out the cell reception and Wi-Fi coverage of an RV park or campground before you go. Call them, read online reviews, whatever you have to do, because if you're trying to do school online or work from your computer, it's not always going to be great. So if it's a really important day, don't go to a really remote location. Stay near a city or somewhere where you're absolutely sure they have great reception. 90% of RV parks and campgrounds have public restrooms and showers. Things you want to do for exercise. I use my bike a lot. I have a yoga mat, I have some tennis rackets. We have down there camp chairs. You can sit around a campfire or just sit outside and read. Definitely need camp chairs. We brought a Frisbee and a kite. And you can bring, you know, I see people with bocce ball, ladder ball, um, cornhole, anything like that you can bring can store down uh, outside. Thanks for watching. And if you go on an RV trip, I wish you the best of luck. I hope this video helped you to get organized already.